All right. Welcome back, everyone, to Get the Net. Good show lined up tonight. Bassmaster Classic wrap up show. We got the Rass Master Classic himself, Adam Rasmussen, jumping on. He didn't win. He finished second, but he's still getting that nickname. He's a good dude. He's uh, my travel partner from last year, known him a long time. And we're going to have some laughs with him. He's not just a, just a dud. So, got some good stories from the classic and talk about whatever else is going on. Stick around. See you on the other side of the intro. Welcome to Get the Net, a fishing podcast that takes a deep dive into competitive events, fishing news, tips, tactics, and most importantly, interviews with some of the most interesting and in-tuned anglers from Canada to the central U.S. We're leaving no stone unturned to bring you the most raw and authentic talk talk. My name is Jamie Bruce, and while my resume says bass, my frying pan says walleye, I'm no stranger to the multi-species realm. Whether you're puttering on tackle, driving the bus, cutting the grass, or killing time in a 9 to 5, I'll try to give you something in every episode to take with you on the water, or at the very least, bring you a few laughs. Okay, welcome back everyone to Get the Net Fishing Podcast. Just wheeled back up from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Ended up driving down there Thursday night. I was on the fence whether I was going to be able to go or not with the a five-week-old baby at home and um i asked ashley like on the wednesday night i was like well do you want to just jump in otherwise i'll probably stay and uh she said okay so we uh we wheeled the youngster down there 18 hour drive each way that was a bit of a roll of the dice but everything worked out really well um and yeah good to be back at the classic it's only the second time i've ever been and i'm getting spoiled because my buddies keep doing good gussie won last year so obviously it's tough to beat that in knoxville uh, and then this year like the boys are right back in the hunt again raz was up in the super six coop was up in the super six raz took a good run at this thing um it was pretty damn fun to watch and it's hard to pass up going to the classic you know it's kind of the one block party of the year where you get to run into everyone in the industry and you know see what the brands you work with all year are all about and i work with the best ones because the guys are the most fun <laughs> uh you know there's no uh you don't have to fake your personality with with the crews and um yeah just puts a puts a check mark beside the brands i'm already running with so and yeah just to see you know every, i haven't really been around anyone since the opens last year so it was fun to run into all the new rookies on the elite series a lot of those boys were lurking around the expo you know got some insight on that on you know how the elites are looking and just good to catch up that expo's nuts um glide bait people are wild <laughs> there were guys like lining up getting a one per glide bait one per customer and then just get right back in a line and they're eBaying and they're bowling each other over. It's like Black Friday on glide bait sales. I uh, I got roped in myself and blew the wad a little bit on some glide baits, but that's all right. That's part of the fun. The expo is absolutely nuts. It's the biggest outdoor expo in North America, I think. Um, you know, if you don't do well in crowds, it's not that great, but at least it's not like a concert crowd. Like it's just a bunch of like-minded people there's just a bunch of them so pretty cool to check out all the new stuff coming out and you know if you're like me and already have too much tackle you really don't need to buy too much tackle but somehow it still happens every time but yeah it was uh it was a quick trip we were only there for two nights um and then hopped in the truck winter storm morning up in minneapolis and and around northwestern ontario and it uh yeah i was going 70 kilometers an hour for way longer than i wanted to but with the youngster and the boss on board, she's safety first. So we made her home a little bit tired still. So if I'm choking on my words or chewing on my words a little bit tonight, that's why. But yeah, another 10 inches of snow, it looks like outside. I had to put the old danners on to make her to the garage. But we're down here. You got to do what you got to do for the pod. That's enough of me rambling. Let's get on Raz here. I think it's his third time on the show. So you're no stranger to the Raz daddy. Here he is. This outdoor content has been brought to you in part by Nordic Point Lodge. Located in northwestern Ontario, Nordic Point Lodge offers some of the finest fish in Canada has to offer. Whether you're looking for a family-friendly getaway or a corporate retreat, Nordic Point Lodge has you covered. 
They offer a luxury outdoor experience with five-star service. Check out the description below for more information. BT Fishing is a northern-born, small-town tackle brand. Focusing on innovating rather than imitating, BT has left a mark on all levels of competitive fishing from walleye tournaments all the way to the Bassmaster Classic. The full BT lineup is comprised of innovative tackle, carefully crafted using the highest quality components. Check out the Smeltinator Jig, Elite Marabou Jig, Crusher Jig, Clack Shot, Clean Jig, Smeltinator Underspin at more at sportsheadquarters.ca. We ship across Canada and the U.S. Use promo code GETTHENET for 10% off all products in the BT lineup. Raz Daddy. What do you know? You're back in your podcast seat. <laughs> Been a lot of that lately. Yeah. I hope you didn't burn up all your good stories. Oh, no. We got some ones yet. <laughs> the hell's going on? Nothing. Just uh, went out on the old table rock for a couple hours, cracked a bunch. Pretty good pond. Yeah, like Trent caught a five on his first cast. <laughs> like, oh, this will be good. Did you retie any of your rods or are you just using your Dude, stuff from the classic? Just pulled the stuff out that I had. Use that. That sounds fairly fun. Yeah. Well, that's right on. You're on a little family vacation. Allie was, yep. uh, she's like, we're going to Branson. No, I wanted to go to Fo- wherever, somewhere cool. I was like, Branson looks like the funnest place on earth. You just drive back past, it looks like a town of roller coasters. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, well, we went to the Butterfly Factory yesterday. That was probably the most fun. What does that entail? A bunch of butterflies in a building. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you have your whiskey on the go in there no i should have definitely <laughs> would have needed that and then the guy like as you're leaving like the guy tries frisking you basically i'm like dude this shit's got to be illegal like we got to make sure that you're not taking any butterflies with you i'm like <laughs> no no bullshit like if I walked into a butterfly factory in Branson, Missouri, and saw you getting frisk searched, <laughs> I don't know if I, <laughs> I don't know if I could process that. <laughs> About the last guy on earth I'd expect to see there. Yeah. Oh well, got to keep the crew happy. They're pretty fired up. I stopped and saw uh, stopped and saw Allie and the rest of your family. We were kind of waiting to see if you were going to shoot out after weigh-ins there, but I know you get dr- probably dragged down to the media room and all that and. Yeah, I didn't get back till uh, like after nine every night. Yeah. Did you go to the Champions Toast after? Yeah. Yep. That's pretty cool, eh? Hey? Yeah. I was, uh, the whole thing is cool. Like, yeah. What was like the biggest surprise that you didn't see coming? Like of the whole thing? Not, obviously not fishing related. I just mean like, what what shocked you? Uh, I don't know. Nothing really shocked me. I guess no. one cool thing that we were at the bar after the champions dinner and KVD was in there, and I'm like, everybody's bothering him for pictures, and I'm like, I went up to him like, dude, I just want to shake your hand. Like, you're a freaking legend. Uh, shook his hand and he's like comes up whispers in my ear he's like dude enjoy all of it like just enjoy the week I'm like oh that's pretty cool 
And then, of course, my wife's like, can you guys do that again? I totally missed it. I want to get a picture of it. I looked at him. I'm like, I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Poor guy's just getting bombarded with people wanting to take pictures. And, like, I don't even want a picture. I just want to shake his hand. Like, keep it all on the down low. And then my wife's like, we got to get a picture of that. I'm like, oh. Yeah, do it again. Whisper in his ear again, too. Right. <laughs> Man, at the toast last year, uh, Buff Buff loves Hackney, and like he's the he like makes him nervous when he's around him. Like he he's his favorite, and uh, we're all fired up after, and the trophy is sitting there, and, like on the table at the toast, and you know, guys are grabbing it. It was just kind of like pretty fast and loose with the trophy and buff picked it up and hackney looked over at him and he was like hey put that down (laughs) 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 he was just mortified (laughs) it was mint but yeah it's cool kvd comes around he was at that thing last year too and i didn't i saw him floating around classic and i assumed he was going there again too so glad you got to be a part of that yeah that was cool How's Hamner? Were you guys talking uh, a lot like before weigh-ins and stuff? We talked a little bit uh, the final day. Like, he came over. He's like, dude, like, you got to tell me. I'm like, tell you what? Like, he's like, what do you have? Like, I can't take this anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh, dude, you got it. He's like, no, like, what do you got? I'm like, man, I don't know, like, 24? He's like, <gasps> What? I'm like, no, I got, dude, I got 18 and a half. Like, you got me. Yeah. So then, well, that's uh, mighty civil of you. Yeah. It was, uh, dude, I would, if I was in his spot, I would have wanted to know. Like, yeah. Yeah, for sure. You don't want to sandbag him. If it was like a club right. derby, yeah, you can sandbag him, but probably not the best yeah. master. Like he was a oh. ball of emotion already, as I'm sure you were, but you just don't show it as you know as much as him. Yeah. It was, so uh, I would pre- I would I would expected the same thing if I was in his you know spot. Like, yeah. So. Well, you were actually truthful with your bass track for the most part, where that's not a thing that people do on the elites, really. Yeah, I usually stand big a couple pounds, but. Yeah. That's just because my scale is intense, and I tell my marshal to enter enter it as ounces. So then I usually have a little more weight than what it says. Yeah, but, that's a nice bonus for everyone. Yeah, everyone watching, huh? Did you twi- did you twist it up that night, like the last night, or were you just dead ass tired? Oh no, uh, I think we got kicked out of the bar at like one thirty or two. I went to what, bed. Where did you go to? I got we were just that. at we were just at the hotel bar. I don't think I could have found my way anywhere else. Um, so yeah, like the night before, I think I ate a piece of pizza. That was it. Didn't eat on the boat all day. As soon as I got upstairs, like people are just handing whiskeys over, like they're going out of style. So of course, I drank every one of them. And, uh, yeah, that's something new, huh? Uh, so got all tuned up. Allie stayed at the hotel that night. I get up there at bar close, go to bed. I wake up at four o'clock in the morning. Like I didn't set an alarm or anything that woke up at four and I'm like, shit, I got to get going. Like I start getting (laughs) dressed. She's like, what are you doing? Like, I got to go. Like, I got to get to the ramp. We got to go fishing today. It's like, it's over. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Apparently, I wanted one more day. <laughs> yeah, you definitely would have won. <laughs> yeah, but like, can we just have a four day derby? Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember doing it. So, and then, yeah, uh, yeah I had to have. Trent that works for me, he was down here. So I had him drive me to Table Rock the next day. I'm like, there's no way I should be driving a vehicle right now. Like, you can drive me over to the 
the VRBO we're staying at. I got caught up on some text messages. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's awesome, man. That's nice for your buddy to drive you. I actually, uh, we were out tearing her up at the bar on the Saturday night and Patrick Walters was out, talked to him for a minute. He was all banged up and it was like, I don't know, it was late. And, uh, and then Hamner said that Walters was getting like driving him or drove him to the ramp on the last morning. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Like was out. <laughs> Like a bullet for him, and I guess when he was asked, you know, asked about it, he's just like, "Yeah, he's like my best buddy." I was like, for, "That's a good friend." <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Rydberg would have drove you. Well, uh, I had uh, actually had Sid came down and uh, he was taking pictures and stuff and doing some videos during practice, and then I made him drive me every day. He's like, "Dude, I'm." shot i'm like you haven't even done anything you haven't even been fishing like <laughs> oh, he's like man. i don't know how i don't know how you guys do this like i'm shot like i'm going to bed <laughs> it's like 8 30 at night on day two i'm like well i'm gonna go back to the room and have a cup of cocktails so i can sleep and <laughs> <laughs> you, you get some rest <laughs> yeah yeah ashley drove down with me and the baby and was like Oh, this is so far. And like, you know, road conditions on the way down were not great, but they were pretty good. Traffic wasn't bad at all in the Oklahoma run. And I'm like, this is the closest run of the year. Like this, this is a cup. Yeah. And then on the way right. back, she, she's sitting there snoring. We're driving through a snowstorm. She's snoring away. Baby wakes up. He's crying in her ear. She's not waking up for anything. And uh, whatever we get her figured out, get like, doesn't even wake up when I roll into town. And, uh, She's just like, I don't know how you're still awake. I was like, I didn't even fish this week. Like, this is as easy <laughs> as it gets. <laughs> right. <laughs> I literally drove down, party for a night and a half, worked at an expo for a day, and drove back. Like, this is cupcake. It's the fishing that kills you, especially yeah. in the classic. Like, you're, there's no way you're drinking enough water or anything like that. No. Like, <clears throat> no, you don't stop to do anything. Like, I think in two days, I told my cameraman I saw an eagle twice. He's like, code word, if you got to take a piss and we're live, you saw an eagle. If you got to take a shit, you saw two eagles. <laughs> Who is we your never... cameraman? Uh, John, I forget his name. Okay. But uh, he is pretty cool. But apparently, like, the eagle thing didn't matter. A couple of people are like, dude, you're taking a leak on live. Like oh, I well. told him I saw an eagle. Like I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Good thing we didn't see two eagles. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. The horse bay spray. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh Jake Latondras told me on Ozarks, uh, like you can't do anything there. There's hundreds of you know, there's a dock everywhere. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I gotta piss. I was like, oh, there's people up there and there's people back here. He's like He's like, Gerald Swindle told me, if you can't see their nose, they can't see your pecker. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's some wisdom. Yeah, that's a good tip. <laughs> I don't know about when you see two eagles. I don't really think that applies, but. <laughs> you did good on live, though, man. I, I uh, And at weigh-ins, you know, it was one of the things that frustrates me most, and it really probably doesn't you know upset anyone but me and it doesn't upset me but like for i think for the sport to like grow you know from like a fan perspective you can't just talk about like fishing and you know lots of people get up there on the way in stage and are like oh yeah they moved to wood today and i had to switch and i get it if you're sponsor plugging but to just give the layout of the fishery it's like no one's going fishing out there tomorrow like you know it's no. you don't even know exactly what's going on and you did a good job you know, and so did Hamner about like, you know, just laying it out there, like leaned on the living the dream part and, and where you came from and how much work it is. And it's just way more relatable. And it makes me 
and Gussie did a really good job at it last year too. It just makes me really happy when when that happens. So I was talking to Sam about it and we were like, Yeah, you you freaking killed it. Like I'm sure you're a little bit nervous at times, but it didn't show. And like that's for me, that's what I like to see on live. So good job yeah, there. I, Give me some flowers. I, I heard a lot of good comments from people about it. They're like, dude, you did awesome. Like we didn't have to sit and listen to your <clears throat> two minutes of sponsor plugs and i mean it if okay if you uh if you're paying attention to the sport at all over the weekend and you didn't see every sponsor on my rap boat while it's on tv live and my jersey like me saying who i have on those two items like it's not going to do anything anyway um, yeah 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 the i mean booths were i try to close with the expo <laughs> <laughs> i try to like just spread it out throughout the year like you know every tournament i throw one out there and share love with everybody and that's all you can do i'm not do i wouldn't be able to do it like i'd be staring at my jersey like oh i forgot about you know whitewater powerhouse or whatever like and if you That's, like if you stand there and rally off like 15 other ones each for each one you rally off the next one loses its weight you know yeah so like you fired out powerhouse and hum and hummingbird and and crush city and that was like in one sentence if you would have kept on just rattling it that people would have just you know their eyes would have glazed over and like you just worked it into the sentence it, there's no way it works to just stand there and pepper sponsor plugs especially when all year you know you got the app going, the social media videos, reels, all that stuff. Like that's, it can be a lot more spread out now. We're in this right. age. We're back in the day. That was the only shot you got. Yeah. So, yeah. No, that was right on. Um, I saw you. I didn't listen to it because I didn't want to ruin our chat here. But I saw you hopped on with uh, Shane Campbell and man, I can't remember his name. Wyatt. Wyatt from Wyatt, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was probably good. Those boys have a good podcast. If you haven't checked that out, it's uh, the Juice, the Juice podcast. The Juice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was a fun one. Yeah, uh, who else? I hopped on. <clears throat> I did one with them. I did. Uh... Oh man, I'm having a brain fart. Serious, uh, serious angling. Yeah, with Bailey and those guys, and then. Uh... Did a little bass matter bass master radio this afternoon. Nice with uh, Ronnie Moore. Yeah. Nope. Uh Tom Abraham. Oh, right, right. There yeah. Ronnie does the inside bass master. Yeah. Huh. So well, you gotta yeah. I think you gotta start every podcast with telling everyone how to pronounce your name. I don't know how many so many people messed it up. <laughs> it was getting Mercer was getting it better by the day um uh -huh. after, after uh day three he comes up to me he's like dude how do i say your name like he's like i butchered it all week long i'm like don't worry about it. <laughs> he tried different <clears throat> variations of it every day though <laughs> yeah uh rasmussen raz daddy yeah raz daddy i swear i heard a couple people call you raz munson <laughs> <laughs> i heard i, I heard a lot funny. Maybe. I heard a lot of different variations, so it's just like, okay. <laughs> um, well, that's good, man. I was uh, I was talking to Ronnie about you on um, on the final day. He uh, was walked by and he snuck out of the Bass Live booth for a second, and I didn't think it was true. And I'm obviously you know this, but. It, he said if you won the classic you would have had an automatic elite berth for next year no you don't have to remind me of that you already knew yeah. though because i told yeah, Br I... Uh, brad and he's like yeah he he said you already told him and he was like no you don't <laughs> yeah no you get an elite berth if you win the classic and you're not in the elite has it ever happened not that i know of has anyone from the uh, opens got second? 
Um, we we're talking about this last night. Uh, I think there was a nation guy that yeah. was runner up one time. Brian Kershaw Otherwise, won from the nations. Or yeah, he won it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as opens, like the closest guy was like fourth. And then, wow. uh, <clears throat> I mean, there's a couple of guys that were in the opens qualified for the elites, but they weren't like they were fishing the elites. They just hadn't started yet and fish the classic. Right. Cause it used to be the first tournament of the year. Yeah. Huh. So. Yeah, man, we're damn close. I'm uh, I'm getting over it, but I was pissed off for a couple of days. Yeah, no, and any of us would have been, but like it's it's a tough spot because it's a absolutely <clears throat> incredible finish, and it's one away from as good as it gets. But yeah, you know, there were fifty three other spots you could have got. Right. Yeah. No, it's I'm not going to complain about it. Like. I didn't see it coming. Like, I'm happy with how I did. I just, I broke a big one off. Don't know how big it was. Shit happens. Oh. Yeah. I mean, and if, if you want to throw some ice on the burn for that, like Hamner lost three or four big ones on the first day. That's what you he know. told me. Like it, it's part of it. Like part of the game, it happens. Um, Dude, I like I truly believe like when it's your time, it's your time, and it wasn't my time. So I, I thought know. there was no way you couldn't win. Cause I've been around you enough travel and like you you're like a home run derby guy. You know? Dude, you I just, I, like, I suck or I win. <laughs> it's yeah, one like, or the other. Win. And I, I told I don't remember, I told a couple people, I was like, Raz is gonna win. Like he's anytime you've been in the top twenty, you've won. 200, yeah. 225 boat tournaments, like crazy wins. And I'm like, oh, if he's teasing it that close, like it's, yeah. But yeah, I, I thought it was going to happen. Like, so day three, because every time I've won, like weird stuff happens. And day three, you know, they're predicting all that wind. And I was fishing a pretty open portion of the lake. But, it, you know, whatever, like, I'm used to fishing in the wind. I live in Sturgeon Bay. It's The wind's always blowing. It's always rough. doesn't bother yeah. me. Yeah. Um, so I'm driving down the lake, and I was going to go fish some random pockets that I hadn't been in for seven days. You know, stuff I fished the first day I was there. I just knew there was a lot of bait in them. So I'm like, I'm going to go fish some pockets in the morning that have bait and see my morning bites sucked. I couldn't catch them in the morning. So I'm like, I have nothing to lose. I'm driving down the lake and like, I'm like, oh man, like, my gut just told me like, go back to where you've been getting them and give it like an hour and see if you get bit and you can get something going. Pull in on like the first brush file, catch one. I'm like, okay, like, this is working. Get another one, another one, another one. Like caught them all before noon. And then the afternoon sucked, like totally different than the first two days. But uh, I had a, uh, I just caught a four something on a brush pile. I'm looking for more piles. Like I found a bunch of new ones the last day. Scan over there's one in like eight foot of water. Like set my jig down, pick up spinner bait, throw it out. Got one. Three and a half. Pick up my jig. Go to the next one, throw my jig in. My camera guy's like, dude, why, uh, why'd you do that? And I'm like, do what? So you picked up spinner bait, you made one cast, caught one, and you put it down and picked a jig back up and caught one. I'm like, I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I do You're like, shut the I hell do... up. I can't get any info. This is the classic. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I do stupid stuff all the time. I don't know why I did it. Like, just strange things like that were happening. And it's like, then I, when I had five, like I had like 18 pounds. I'm like, well, I have four hours left. 
to get like two more good ones. Um, like I started tearing up in the front of the boat. I'm like, this is gonna happen. And uh, yeah, it did happen. But... Yeah, you had the biggest bag of the Super Six though, and you got yeah. second place in the Bassmaster Classic. Second yeah. pays as good as winning an open. It does. <laughs> Actually, with all my bonuses, it was better. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I guess everything's probably the contracts padded a little more for the classic and Yeah. Uh, get some bonuses from a few companies and then I got the Costa deal. You know, I was wearing a pair of Costas. I don't have a sunglass sponsor. Uh that was That's like awesome. five grand. Yeah, so, a pair of sunglasses that you bought. Yeah. Yep. Sick. We're in the stuff that I bought. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, mint, man. Um, I'm not going to... I told Ronnie this too. Um, but anyway, I got the camera switched. So I told uh, <clears throat> Ronnie on the last day, I was like, I really hope Raz wins this for obviously a lot of reasons. Um, but one of the selfish reasons is so I don't have to deal with you at the national championship that's there in November. Cause now you've tasted the classic. <laughs> I was like, oh, sweet. Like Raz is going, Danny's going, we'll be all buddied up. And I think it's going to be like a street fight now. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> well, I'm about 500 brush piles up on you boys. So yeah, I know. I just, uh, I downloaded my waypoints off my graphs onto a card. Everyone that's on there is a brush pile. And there are 496 <laughs> waypoints. <laughs> I heard about Which, a lot of guys I, like going pre-practicing there and marking like several hundred brush piles and not fishing any of them. Yeah. It'll, uh, I'm sure now like everywhere that we we're catching them, like all the top guys that were, in that creek like every pile is gonna have shit hanging off of it just get destroyed so. yeah it's gonna have It'll be a single play deal. colorado swim baits hanging off of it or uh spinner yeah. baits they ain't gonna need a spinner bait anymore <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah but you got lots of chances to get back there this year like you you know now that you've broken down the barrier of winning national events it's like they're just it's not like a it's not going to be a huge shock if you win another one you know yeah and we go to alabama next month like that's my state that's your I state Woo roll tide whatever they say <laughs> down there <laughs> you can keep that place <laughs> <laughs> i love alabama what's wrong with alabama yeah i don't mind alabama but I always get my ass kicked when we go there. I stopped at Gunnersville on my way back from uh, Santee Cooper. So I was going to stay at Tripp's house for a night. And I got there at like 2.30, like had two and a half hours to fish. He was on the water. So I just parked my boat, grabbed a jackhammer rod, hopped in his boat, caught eight and a half. And he's like... I hate you. He's like, I live here and I haven't caught an eight and a half yet. Like every time you come here, you catch a big one. Yeah. You get along with Alabama real nice. Like, yeah. Um, yeah we're... Points wise. I I'll tell you what I think is going to happen. You're probably looking at the points. Like if it was last year, you'd be toast, you know, you'd be out. Yeah. Of it. But this year it's just so volatile in the opens race that like, there's only a couple of guys like killing it. And even then they're still not at the same level that the first couple were after last year. Like it was just stacked like cordwood. This is like, there's really good anglers that are just super volatile. So I feel like you're going to probably be going pretty hard just to make it back to the classic. And you're probably going to, whether you win another one or not, you're probably going to stumble along some pretty damn good finishes. And by the end of the year, I bet you look up and see that uh, you're pretty damn close to it. Am I yeah. wrong in saying that? No, no, that's a hundred percent what's going to end up happening. Like, if I can get my head out of my ass in the opens, um, I don't know what happened in the first three, but it's not the yeah. Like you're right, this year's totally different. Uh, 
it's like at Sandy Cooper, like everything even changed so much that, you know, we're going up north for three tournaments, like true north, three tournaments. A lot yeah, of things man. are going to change. It's going to be an interesting year on the opens for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the field's as good as it's ever been. And the schedule is crazy volatile. Like last mm -hmm. year, like the first three tournaments we went to were just all the same, you know? Right. Or this year, yeah, it's, it's like you can't just, it's just all over the place. And then you've yeah. been to, uh, lacrosse lots and and leech too right yeah i've never been to st Clair, but they're small moths i don't know yeah crank up the old uh, 16 bolt and the forward looking ponar yeah <laughs> just fine i'm open and doping yeah he's scoping I'm around sure. there for sure yeah i think that's like the scope hole yeah i well, might uh i don't know we'll see might go do something crazy i've never been there but and i would think you could find them up shallow out on erie somewhere yeah yeah you got the boat for it yeah so do i can't wait to be out there in the in the big lawn like i hope it blows we'll just get you know We'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Our trolling motors ain't coming out of the water. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah, none of those guys are going to run in that stuff. We're, They'll we're run, used to it. A lot of them will run in it, but they won't be able to fish in it. Yeah. like that, That's when you start getting your feet soaked when the waves come over. and Yeah. Just not good. That's the best part about having a big <laughs> walleye-ask boat. Yep, for sure. That's why I was happy when I saw the wind at the classic. I was like, well, Raz is from Sturgeon Bay and he's in a giant boat. <laughs> he yeah. ain't going to get blown off. Robbie Floyd came up to me in the morning. He's like, are you really going to go fish that flat where you've been catching them? Like, it's going to be so windy in there. And like, that's really your plan. I'm like, yeah, that's my plan. I'll see you there. Like, <laughs> dude, this place doesn't even get rough. Like, two footers, maybe. Come on, Robbie, uh, quit spinning them out. <laughs> last like, yeah, year, I'm going to go fish there. Last year at the Tennessee Classic, I think it was Scott Canterbury was like on the bank and Robbie was doing like the, you know, the interview in, out in front of him, like only, I don't know, maybe 20 yards kind of thing, like definitely within earshot. And he's like, Canterbury has no idea that he only needs 13 pounds to win the Bassmaster Classic. And I'm like, dude, he just heard you. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of thing you don't think about that can just happen, you know, where it sways it. Right. But I'm, you're not really the kind that's going to get spun out from a reporter asking you, are you really going to go do that? No. I, like, it's... All week I didn't <clears throat> I didn't listen to anybody like uh Doc Talk called me the one day and he's like, Oh, oh uh, this is going on. I'm like, uh-huh, okay. He's like, You're not gonna go look at it and check it out? I'm like, No. I'm gonna go do what I wanna do. Like I've learned that like me chasing other people's crap around is completely useless. Just go yeah. fish your own fish. And, you know, I talked to Jay. That's about the only person that, you know, well, it's the only person I traveled with for the classic. And I trust him 100%. Um, yeah. You know, it's like, I don't, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear, I'm like, do you, <clears throat> do you really think that any of these guys are going to be honest with you? You guys are fishing the classic against each other. Like, there ain't anybody telling you the truth or throwing you a bone in this thing. Like, yeah, it's not write like it all off. Like, hey, man, come check this out. To get you'll save some good points if you just get on this program. Yeah, like, it's weird yeah, or ex right? Exactly. <laughs> like, go do your own thing. Yeah, he had a good Stop. comeback last day. He had a good derby. Man, all the like, what did? Yeah, what did Kyle finish? 
I don't even, I haven't even pulled up the stats. I've literally just been driving since and then went to work. Was he like fifth or sixth? Seventh. Seventh, I yeah. think. That's two top tens in a row for him. Yeah. One in an elite and one on the classic. Shakur freaking crushed him. I was sitting right beside, uh, right behind his family at the, at the weigh-in. We definitely stood when he came in. Like, <laughs> just <laughs> it was Coop's family. Yours was out in front of us, and then Shakur. I was like, ah, oh, it's all, you know, all beauties yeah. in the top six. Not much booing going on from us. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, I was. Uh... <laughs> I was hoping I would have been the one to boot him off of the hot seat, but I got beat to that one. That's kind of a bummer. Yeah. I was, I, I'm sitting in line, and uh, Cody Huff's right in front of me. And, you know, Jay's still in the hot seat. I'm like, I'm just PO'd that I'm not going to win. And uh, I just had a moment. I'm like, oh. I'm gonna get to boot Jay out of the hot seat. Like we're gonna make the we're gonna make this fun. Like have some fun with it, and then yeah, Cody we'll Huff went up and, and booted like a pile driver or something. And yeah, <laughs> then Cody booted him off. I'm like, damn, we're not gonna be able to do that now. You should have just but, beat uh, Huff. What's that? You should have beat Huff up when you booted him. <laughs> Yeah. He was catching him on uh, a little OG crankbait on the first day, hey? Yeah. Yeah, on that Pretty, little slim. It was awesome how, like, not to get back to the fishing, but, like, everyone was doing different stuff. Yeah. Like, everyone. That was freaking cool. Uh, that's the kind of lake it is. You can kind of, I think you can go do whatever you're comfortable doing any time of the year and catch them. That's just Grand Lake. Cool lake. I like it. Yeah. I mean, I like I liked it before the classic was announced. It was going to be there. I had only been there one time, and I'm like, and you yeah, hate most like lakes. Bef- before yeah. the last like six months, you were like, we were going to get you the this lake sucks hoodie from mm-hmm. uh, from Jordan Lee. Oh, totally. All the lakes suck, bastard. <laughs> <laughs> they all suck. They're all dead. There's no bass left. <laughs> You've heard it all. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a major attitude change in you, though. Yeah, now I I can't use that excuse anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't working. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest part, the first year you did all nine, you were just, like, beaten down into a pulp, like, driving further than anyone, going to these dumps. Like, a- anyone would have quit. And you're like, I'm still going to Red River. <laughs> Like the hottest place and <laughs> hotter than hell, no bass. Still uh, went there anyway, like just grinding through that, it. Now look at you. Like you probably didn't that, think when you were driving to that tournament that you were gonna be second in the Bassmaster Classic with two national wins in the last year. <laughs> Nor did I think I'd cash Chuck in that tournament. That was my best tournament that year. Like I guess the only one I cashed Chuck in. It was an absolute terrible year. And uh, I thought about it for a minute. I'm like, all right, maybe I should. Uh, and we got like four left. I'm out. Maybe I should just think about hanging it up for the rest of the year, save some money for the next year. And uh, yeah, eventually I just came to my senses. And I'm like, dude, you're not quitting. Like, go learn something. You're not going to get anywhere this year, but go learn, go learn more. Um, Cause I don't know. A lot of people think like, Oh yeah, he probably like fishes down South all the time and he's honing his skills. What? No, I fished down South for nine weeks. This year is, will be 11 weeks because of the classic and the nation deal. Uh, I don't come down here for fun. I don't have a family at home. Like I don't get to spend extra time down here fishing. Uh, yeah. Today I got to I got to go on Table Rock for two hours today. It'd probably be the only two hours I fish on the lake the whole week. But yeah, uh, I get it, man. It's that's you. That's you know how it is. You're, yeah. You did the same thing, like you know, yeah. you got a job at home and a family, and 
you can't just go screw off every day. Yeah. That's why you should get like an extra prize when you beat guys that have been fishing all year. <laughs> you should get an asterisk beside your name. <laughs> right. No, you shouldn't. They got to keep going. It gives us something to bitch about. And then it just makes it sweeter when you beat them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, if I could, if I could do it, I would be doing it. Like, if Absolutely. I could go fish 250 days a year, I would go do it. I do fish Tyler, 250 days a year, but like most of those are at home guiding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not as a that probably hurts you more than anything. Not now, yeah. but at the start, like you just got to change your mindset to go catch anything. Right, but. Yeah, Tyler Williams said it best uh, talking to him in Missouri. I didn't even say anything. I was like, what's up, man? Good job. He's like, yeah, thanks. He's like, everyone gets pissed off because I come down here and fish all the time. But he's like, if you were given the opportunity to, like, wouldn't you? I was like, yeah, like, I'm not <laughs> I'm not grilling yeah. you. I totally understand. Anyone that says yeah. that is just jealous. Like, who who isn't jealous of someone who f- gets to fish every day? Right, exactly. Like. Whether you want to admit it or not, it's just jealousy. And that's what most of what, you know, the negative stuff in the fishing world is right now. Yeah. yeah there's, there's too many haters out there. Like, you just got to be happy for people when it's their time. What? what you want to go beat your head into the wall on one of these shitty southern lakes for a month? pre-practicing be my guest i'm not doing it i have enough after five days of practice (laughs) yeah it's a lot (laughs) gotta like wait till these guys get old like i don't know it's harder when you're older i used to fish like on the same you know with the same like determination that they had like where i would just go no matter what and it was the only thing that mattered but once you get older it's just like all right you gotta pull like from deep inside you had a grinder till dark every day yeah like it ain't for sure. natural it's a, it's a concerted effort to keep your ass out there yeah you'd but, have been proud of me i was uh it's pretty much dark to dark the whole practice actually this whole year i've been dark to dark maybe that's my problem <laughs> you know lighten up on <clears throat> lighten up on the old pre-fishing a little bit <clears throat> yeah, it, I it must not be a coincidence because you won Wheeler, you showed up, you missed the first like two or two and a half days of practice, and then the Nation, you guys missed a day of practice because of travel from the Opens, and then the next day it rained three inches. So you put what well, you did what two days on that day and, and a half, half basically, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. yeah. <clears throat> And then this week, like I, I figured out in the first two days where I wanted to fish and then I just screwed off the rest of the time. Like I still went out and fish, but I found some other stuff, like looking for other stuff. I didn't want to, I didn't want to go near anything I planned on fishing during the tournament. Um, so yeah, like, I don't know. Must've been nuts only having 55 boats out there instead of the usual two two and a quarter it was weird like (laughs) first day i'm like you know there's like a local tournament going on so you saw some locals but i'm like where is everybody like i haven't seen anybody but you spread them out across grand lake like you're not gonna see them i'm so used to opens and you're like watching stuff you want to fish and it's like oh 10 guys just blew over that in the last hour i'm not not wasting my time with that. It's yeah. crazy. It's fun. Yeah, it must be a different world. Oh well. Um well, I'll pull in for you to get back there, man. That was sweet. I'm uh yeah, man. I'm glad it was you know, <clears throat> I don't think anyone's got a question. It's not just gonna be a flash in the pan, like you could see you're rolling, like it's obviously going to happen again at some point because you got hope so you keep finding all this determination from god knows where like how old are you 39 yeah yeah and you keep pulling digging deeper for motivation 
like the Red River thing that we mentioned earlier was already nuts enough. So I uh No man, I'm, I, I love I love it. Like I love tournament bass fishing. Like I didn't get a lot of time to do it when I was younger. Uh, I like to go out in the boat by myself and like learn and figure stuff out. And uh yeah, I can't get enough of it. That's I had to go fishing today because I'm like I haven't fished since Sunday. Like, it's driving me nuts. So, snuck out for a couple hours. But, yeah. I mean, what other sport can you do at 39 and still get, you know, get the feeling from touching the top of the sport? Right. Exactly. So, all right, man. I'm not going to hold you any longer. I know you probably got a few more things to do. Uh, not looking forward to seeing it grand, but I'm sure I'll see you this summer at some point. Um, yeah, well, well, yeah KBI. I mean, the you coming to KBI yeah, and too? all the open. Yeah. Yeah. Me and the warden are going to fish that. So yeah, that's Matt Rydberg of soon arrows. If you do <laughs> want to fish near soon arrows and KBI, uh, he needs a two week notice. Uh, <laughs> you got to buy him dinner and written rationale and he's going to need your boat registration and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So we're probably got to probably got to get him a bottle of gibson and yeah how sweet is kbi though like that's kbi that's is the, a the mini classic <laughs> yeah yeah ryberg was like all right well you got your tent parade you made super six like probably don't want to do kbi anymore huh i'm like no i want to go through the kbi tent too like i want them all um yeah, Fort yeah. Francis is the other one with a banger, so that'll have to be next. Yeah. No, KBI is a blast. I love it up there. There's so much cool stuff to go fish. Like, you don't get bored. You don't get sick of it. No. Uh, some of these lakes we go to down south is just like, all right, like, let's just get this thing started. Like, I don't have anything else to go look at. Um, but, man, you guys have so much good fishing up there. It's unreal. Yeah, you got to so, talk the Sturgeon Bay, Sturgeon Bay Open into a tent parade. Surprise, they don't. Well, so now we have to, uh, <laughs> with all this, no tournaments in Sturgeon Bay, whatever. Uh, I guess we're weighing in on a barge <laughs> because it's federal water. Technically, we can't be in the city, so the weigh in will be on a barge this year. Man, so, that's uh, crazy. <clears throat> crazy that, like there's rules in place to just mess with a, specifically at one tournament yeah it's uh it's a little ridiculous but like th- a lot of these turn like i don't know the economic impact from bass tournaments is crazy like these chamber of commerce all pay the opens and the elites and the nations to go to their town because people come and spend millions and Somewhere like Sturgeon Bay or KBI and, you know, the other big tournaments around like that. It's it's free. Like the volunteers do it. They're giving the free economic impact to the town. And there's always just so many barriers. I just wish yeah. you could take them around and kind of show everyone how it is in the South. Right. But. Yeah, oh well, I don't understand it. It is what it is. But... Yeah. Okay, bud. Uh, I'll I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. Otherwise, I'm going to be seeing you at St. Clair. Sounds good, man. Yeah, we'll talk before yeah, then. Ron, congratulations again. And uh, where can everyone find you? What do you, you got a big social blowing up now? Oh, yeah, social's going crazy. I'm not a social media guy, but I will. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to have a camera guy following me around for the rest of the year. We're nice. going to start doing some videos. I'm getting on with my technical side now. Uh, I'll yeah. probably be bugging you for some tips. Like, <laughs> how do yeah. I run these damn GoPros? What do I do? But uh, no, we're going to start doing all that stuff and, uh, you know, go on social media, Rasmussen, Adam Rasmussen Pro Angling. Um, check it out on Facebook. I got a website, rasmussenoutdoors.com. But uh, get to those pages and then you'll be able to filter through to get to the rest. So. Nice, man. Glad to hear yeah. it. That's cool. It'll be fun to watch. 
Yeah, just we're uh, good building building a brand now. So this was definitely a jump start on it uh, with being at the classic and the fans loved it. So I'm gonna yeah. do I'm gonna do my part now and uh, you know teach people some stuff. Yeah, Cormorant Outdoors, you got to call it, though. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> we'll save that for another podcast, but that's Raz's name is the Cormorant, courtesy of uh, our buddy Benny. <laughs> 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 we'll sign off here. Give him a follow. I'll link your stuff below and uh, go enjoy the week, man. You earned it. Sounds good, bud. Thanks for having me again. See you, man. Thanks for coming. See you. Bye.